A fractured identity, a dark secret, and a voice the enemy tried to silence. Jasmine Wheeler shares her struggles with brokenness, abuse, and a toxic relationship, and how the Lord led her to a hope-filled future. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, she is a talented singer with a passion to help lead others into the presence of God, and she serves as the worship leader of Mercy Culture in Fort Worth, Texas. She's here today to share some music with us. Here is Jasmine Wheeler. And I've tried tried on my own I've worked for these wages I've carried the load but I'm tired I'm tired of this striving turns out I was just trying to make somebody proud but you say you come to me All who are tired, all who are weary You say you come to me My yoke is easy, my burden's light So I'm coming What seems big to me is easy for you You fight the Take the battle in your hands It's easy for you What seems big to me Is easy for you You fight the battle while I stand You take the battle in your hands It's easy for you Freedom is easy in your presence Deliverance is easy in your presence. Healing is easy in your presence. In your presence. In your presence. Freedom is easy in your presence. Deliverance is easy in your presence. Healing is easy in your presence. In your presence.
presence. Deliverance is easy in your presence. Healing is easy in your presence. In your presence. In your presence. Freedom is easy in your presence. Deliverance is easy in your presence. Healing is easy in your presence. In your presence. In your presence. Well, you know, for Jasmine, life started with brokenness already built in, but she would come to know the Lord at a young age. Yet yeah, walking out her faith would be a long, difficult journey. She would even find herself in a relationship that was both toxic and unbiblical. So how did God deliver her and show her a better way? Well, she's here to tell us more about that. Welcome all the ladies to the table. Thank you. Lisa Binion, Anna Kendall, Rachel Brown, Hello. Rebecca Weiss, and Cindy Murdoch. Hey. Welcome yes. along with Jasmine. So good to hey. have you. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Oh, it's just a joy to have you. And I, I tell you what, I love, I love your smile. Yes. And I love that I see Jesus on the countenance of your face. Oh. And I really so do. Kind. And uh, really uh, proud of you and, and all that and how God is using you. Um, but you have a story and we're here to share it. And we want to be a blessing to people that are watching. So let's start from the beginning. Tell us about growing up. What was your home life yeah, like? Yeah, well, I would say I grew up in a broken home, uh, as you said. Uh, my mom and dad divorced when I was two years old. And then my mom got remarried to my stepfather. Over the years, found out pretty quickly that my stepdad was on drugs, lots of alcohol, bipolar, schizophrenic, just a lot of abuse in the home. And so um, just immediately kind of in my, that early age was experiencing a lot of turmoil in my house. Um, so my mom, she was a, she's a woman of God, still a woman of God. Uh, and so we would be at church almost every day of the week. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality was when we would get back home, there was chaos there, a lot of abuse, a lot of hard things to walk through. Um, so that, that kind of marked my childhood, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here you are. You are growing up in the household. You're going to church. When did you actually kind of receive Jesus? Was it at an early age? Yeah, um, I would say, I have journals of me talking to the Lord, little letters to the Lord <laughs> when awesome. I was like eight years old, you yeah. know? And yeah. so uh, I, I was connecting with God at a young age, but I would say my relationship with the Lord became real for me um, when I got into early high school. So I had an encounter with the Lord, um, was experiencing, like I said, that chaos in my house. And one day I was in my room and I just said, Lord, I know you're real, but I don't really think you care much about me. I don't think you care much about my family, my mom. And so if you're really present, if you're here, will you do something to make yourself known in the room right now? And I had my first significant encounter with God. It felt like a blanket came and just rested on my shoulders and really freaked me out. Uh, I never felt anything like that before. And that kind of sent me on this trajectory uh, to get to know the Lord. So I prayed a sinner's prayer probably when I was, um, I think it was 2001, so I would have been about eight years old or something something like that. Yeah. But it didn't become real for me and connecting with God until I was freshman in high school. Okay, so you continue on um, the trajectory of uh, junior high school, high school, and you're a basketball player, point yeah. guard. Yeah, shorty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And so... Um, that's exciting, and you were good. I mean, you were so good in high school that you went on fast. into college and played ball, right? I was okay. Yes. <laughs> I, I made it. My the skin of my teeth in the college <laughs> basketball, yeah. Okay, so tell us about that journey, and where was God in all of that? Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's... I made it by the skin of my teeth in the D1 basketball. Um, and But I loved Jesus all throughout high school. And we saw revival in my high school, saw God move, got into college. And I remember telling God as soon as I got to college, um, I need to meet the revivalists. I need to meet the crazy on fire for Jesus people because I want to make it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. and, um, and I just heard there was a lot of people, a lot of friends of mine that would go to college and fall away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that. Um, and then something very significant happened my senior year of college. Um, I tore my ACL. Uh, and so when you're playing D1 college basketball, that's a really big deal because yeah. your college career is kind of over, <laughs> you know? What did the doctor say? Um, I mean, they told me I was done. It was it, huh? So that and was so, it. you know, rough. the yeah. thing about it is yeah. when trouble comes, and it will come, whether you know the Lord or not, it will come. And But the, the thing is, God will be with you through it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important to understand. But this for you 
was a big deal, and you kind of had the idea that God had left you. And you're like, hey, I've been doing this for you, and this for you, this for you, and all of a sudden this happens. Tell us about that conversation you had with the Lord. Yeah, um, I was I was offended at God, I can honestly say. Um, you know, one of the things that we had seen throughout all of our college years was we were seeing people get healed, and people come to know Jesus, and people get delivered. And so, you know, we're praying for people that are getting healed. And then here I am with a torn ACL, my eighth game of the season when I finally love basketball and I'm not getting healed. Mm. And so I was just like, God, what's the deal? Like, you can just heal me just like this, you know? And so I was, I was very disappointed. I also felt... Uh, lonely. You know, my church community at the time was about an hour away from where I was in school. And so they weren't, it, it was just the perfect storm. They weren't yeah. really able to come and see me when I tore my ACL and I was stuck in the house. And so I felt really by myself. Um, and the only person that uh, was kind of there for me in the midst of that as one of my teammates. And she was helping me with the surgery recovery. And she was helping me work through things, getting things done for me, making sure I had food and all the things. I just couldn't move around a lot. And um, in the midst of that, uh, this friendship that had actually started really pure and really beautiful, uh, God had told me that he was going to draw her to himself. So I knew she was going to come to follow Jesus. And so I was excited about that. And as she was helping me recover, um, we started crossing boundaries emotionally, physically, and what started pure became perverted. And this friendship that I think was from the Lord, all of a sudden we found ourselves in a full-blown homosexual relationship. Uh, and it was mind-blowing to me because I never saw it coming, oh, wow. never struggled with same-sex attraction, wasn't a part of my story, wasn't a temptation of mine, um, but it was just a, a friendship that the enemy really got into and, and perverted. Yeah. Um, turned toxic, so. Did you start questioning your sexuality when you got in that relationship? Like, maybe there's something to this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. There would be these moments in the midst of it where I would say it felt like the enemy would um, mm -hmm. present um, an argument to me, an, an option to me. And mm -hmm. I, I remember hearing the phrase, well, you must be gay. Well, you must be this. Wow. And I would feel... I don't know any other way to explain it, but I would feel the Holy Spirit in me almost fighting, rejecting yeah. the declaration of my mm -hmm. identity. Because it yeah. felt like it was a war over my identity, what I would come into agreement with mm -hmm. regarding my identity. And so I just kept feeling this like, no, that's not, that's not who I am. That's not what yeah. God says. That's not the plan. That's not, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and so I never feel like I came into agreement yeah. with that, but it was presented many times for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Well, you know, and what's interesting about your story is that you were kind of caught up in this and no one knew about it. It was in secret. Yeah. And, um, but you really believed the word of God and you really loved God. Yes. And you knew that this wasn't God's plan for your life. Yeah. And so for people watching who may find themselves in a similar situation, how did you walk out of that? And when we talk about this, I think it's important to understand that, um, you know, God can help you and deliver you out of these different yes. types of situations. Because some people say, oh, well, you know, you're born that way, right. blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Yeah. But um, that's really not true, is it? And what happened with you? Tell, tell us about the journey out. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I felt, like you said, I just felt bound. I felt trapped. I felt stuck. Um, my whole life, you know, I, I've been in scenarios helping other people walk through this, ministering yeah. to them in the scenario. Yeah. Um, but if I'm honest, I never even had an uh, empathy where from, this, from the perspective of uh, never a compassion in my heart towards the people who were walking through it. In my mind, I'd just be like, mm -hmm. well, just stop. Yeah. <laughs> just get out of it. Stop doing that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And here I am in this scenario where I felt like, man, I can't get out. Wow. Yeah. I feel trapped, mm -hmm. and now I understand a little bit about how these people feel this way. And, um, but I knew the scripture that says that whenever there's temptation, that, that God would always provide a way out. Yeah. And yeah. so I said, Lord, you said that you provide a way out of this, and I don't see it, but I'm giving you permission to make it loud and clear. And you meant it. I meant it with yeah. my whole heart. I'm going to give somebody a dream, yeah. prophetic word, tell on me, give somebody something. Yeah. Some, in some way, Drag have something. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and I meant yeah. it. And, um, and he's so faithful. The next day, a friend of mine 
called me and she said, hey, this is kind of strange, but I had a dream about you last night. And um, it's probably symbolic, because I know you don't struggle with this, but in the dream, <laughs> you were in a relationship with a woman. Told me what the girl looks like, told me your name, and told me a setting that she saw us in that we had been in. Wow. Wow. And I just started weeping, and I was like, Yes! Were you, this... like, shocked? That's oh, I was wild. so shocked. It was, it was Lord wild. Knew, the Lord knew you needed to get it really plain. Oh, like yeah. That, and, well, and I asked him for it. <laughs> yeah. And I sincerely, authentically desired it, and mm -hmm. he did it. And, um, and so I, I told her, I said, no, I, I told the Lord if he did this, then I would take the way out. I need to tell you what's been happening. So I told her everything, brought it into the light, and she was amazing, so much kindness, so much mercy, so much love, but truth. It was as love well. and truth together. Yes. It was grace yes. and truth together. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I and I appreciated that. Cause I, I think sometimes people can uh, encounter people who are maybe in this lifestyle or in these types of situations and think that the best way to love them is by just softening the truth. Yeah. So you don't hurt their feelings or you make it easier, whatever it is. But I was thankful for a friend told me the truth and I knew the truth. And, um, and so we talked about it and then she helped me bring it to my friends and spiritual leaders in my life and mentors and just kind of began the, the freedom process. You know, um, Lisa, I wanted you to be on the table today because you understand that the enemy always tries to divert us from the anointing and the calling God Absolutely. on our life. I know you can relate to some of what she's saying. I wanted you to just share a moment. Well, when you're marked by God, um, he will always try to attack you in ways that you least expect. And for me, I, I told you before we, you know, when we were standing around here, I identify so much with your story, um, with the whole same-sex attraction. For me, I went through a period of time in my life, and it was almost like... Um, See, I had been raped as a mm. child. I was six years old. Mm. And so what that did to me was it made me fear men. Now, I didn't fear my father. I didn't fear my brothers. Mm -hmm. But every other man, I was scared to death of them. Mm. And so as I got older, um, you reach puberty. You start growing up and having all these feelings in your body. Mm -hmm. And it's time to date someone. I wasn't so much attracted to a woman as I was. I was attracted to safety. Mm -hmm. right. And I felt yes. yeah. safe with women. Mm -hmm. And so my first experience just led to the next, to the next. And so after a period of years of thinking, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? Am I gay? Is there so What is wrong with me? Um, until, I, you know, I became a drug addict. And in that world that I lived in, um, I discovered I'm not gay, I'm not straight, I'm just messed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be any longer with a man or a woman. It was, I'm just sick of people, period. I've got to have my, my fix. And so... Yeah, what was your kind of light moment out of all of that? My moment became about the presence of God. Yeah. I didn't even know how to get into God's presence by myself. I would travel with my brother and his wife, and... Um, we would do all these conferences, and it was almost like they would just pull me into the presence of God with them, and I didn't know how I got there. I just ended up there, and it sustained me for years until when I was on my own. I'm like, okay, I've got to figure this out on my... It's like your salvation. You know, you can't get into heaven on your own. Mm -hmm. On someone else's salvation, you have to have a personal relationship yourself. And so when I discovered how to break into his presence without, I didn't need music, I didn't need singers, I didn't need a band, I didn't need a preacher, I didn't need anybody. I just needed a surrendered heart. Mm. And when I began surrendering my heart, not just as something to say, but completely surrendered, I found the door of his presence and that, is what switched mm. the whole script for me. Yes. Because I was like, I became, it wasn't even conviction anymore. It became, I just want to please him. Yeah. yeah. I just want to please him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm single to this day, and I'm 58 years old, and I'm, I'm not one of those women that care about telling my age. I've earned every wrinkle, <laughs> but I feel like if God... You look wonderful. Yes, yes. you do. Yes, you do. You think so. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, I, and I'm happy. I'm ha that's the thing. Yeah, that through my entire stories, <laughs> I got my joy back. Yeah, oh, yes. yes. I got my, not just freedom, but see, I didn't get just healed. Healing is one thing, but when you get whole, yes. Yes. there you go. Man, joy comes with it. I love it. So, about how long was that process for you, Jasmine, out of that? Isn't it interesting to hear another story? I love it. Yeah. We need more stories, yeah, more people we sharing the testimonies. Yeah. So talk about how long was that process? It wasn't overnight. No, no. I would say it was probably about a two-year process of um, renewing my mind through the Word of God, of uh, bringing temptations and struggles into the light and keeping them in front of me, sharing them with friends and family. Or if you had a temptation or thought you would you'd shine the light yes. on it. Okay, but I have to know, like, when you, when this lady confronted you with this dream, yeah. what did you, how did you end the relationship? Like, what did you say to the other girl? Yeah, well, it was, it was really interesting. If you remember, um, the Lord had told me that he wanted to draw her to himself. Yes. Yeah. That was part mm -hmm. of what he wanted to do in her life. And so... Uh, there was a kind of the the breaking point in the relationship where I was just like kind of hitting rock bottom. But she started asking me about the Lord. She was getting hungry for the things of God, and I didn't feel like I could lead her to the Lord because I was the stumbling block that had her in <laughs> sin. So I was like, well, this is kind of that's a real catch twenty two. Yeah, I can't really tell you about Jesus. And so, and, and I I knew that the Lord wanted her because He had told me that. And so. Um, that's when I began to ask him to provide a way out. The girl has the dream. And then after the dream, I went back to, her, to, the, to the young lady and I said, hey, this is not God's best for you. This is not God's best for me. I told her about the dream. She thought the dream was insane, you know, because she, she was new and yeah. had never experienced God doing something like that. And so yeah. she was like, this is wild, you know. And uh, long story short, I had the opportunity to lead her to the Lord wow. and then got a chance to be a part of her baptism. Um, and then awesome. over the years, um, eventually just felt like it was healthiest for both of us to not talk to each other, to not be in contact mm -hmm. with yeah. each other, which is very mm -hmm. healthy and necessary mm -hmm. sometimes. And, um, and so that was necessary for us. Mm -hmm. And so for about two years, um, it was a process of yeah. bringing it into the light. Um, and God healing some of those empty places yes. that actually maybe opened the door yes. that you didn't even realize were there. Absolutely. Because he was preparing you for something and uh, you had no idea at that point because you are going to go work in the corporate world. Yeah. And God was like, no, yeah. I'm going to have you over here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so you, of course, got into music and um, now you're leading worship at um, Mercy Culture, which that. is amazing. But we have to get into the other part of your story because we love Hallmark stories. <laughs> <laughs> this is the perfect one. <laughs> so um, all of a sudden, there was someone that came into your life. Yeah. And tell us about him. It's, it's such a crazy story, but essentially... Uh, he had come to our church. Uh, he's from Canada, so he was he happened to be in Texas. Got it, brought him to Texas for a short season. He tried out for the drums. He tried out. Don't for the leave worship. that part out. <laughs> I was gonna skip <laughs> by that part. But you're right. <laughs> he tried out for the worship team, and our and team he rejected him. Our team rejected him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he did not give up. Yeah, yeah he's on the team now. So I'll he's go on for the team full now. circle. Now. He's back on the team. <laughs> he did shame. make it. Yeah, yeah. But he tried out. Didn't make the team. He came to one of our creative nights. Um, which is just a, a night for creatives to gather at our church. And he came, and the Lord gave me a word for him, so I just went and submitted this word to him and didn't think much of it. And then at the end of the night, uh, you know, we're all cleaning up, breaking down tables and chairs, all that stuff. And he comes over and he's like, hey, is there anything I can help with? Just, like, kind of comes out of his way to see if we yes. need help with anything. <laughs> and, uh, and next thing I know, he's, like, carrying chairs and tables, just, like, just doing the most but I noticed. Servant. <laughs> Servant's yeah. heart. Yeah, I yeah, noticed. Serving. Just Aww. He's serving. Uh, I think it was his first time there, and he's there, one of the last people there helping clean up. Yeah. So I was really blessed by that, blessed by the humility. Um, and so I went home that night and told my roommate, uh, one of my best friends, I said, hey, there's something happening with this guy. I don't know what's up. And, uh, and then I didn't really see him anymore, and we didn't really talk that much anymore. <laughs> And uh, he moved, he went back to Canada, and then my pastor um, posted a happy birthday post for me a few, uh, maybe a month or so later. And at the end of the post, he said, and she's single, ready to mingle, but you gotta come through me. 
uh, for context, my pastor was my youth pastor. Mm -hmm. So I've known him since I was like 14. Yeah, so yeah. he means it. You got to come but through. Connor, but Connor saw the post. Connor saw he the thought, post. He thought, okay, this is my chance. Yeah. He, <laughs> and he, he jumped in and sent my pastor a message and Quite was like. Quite literally. <laughs> He was like, I'm doing this. Yeah, yeah, he sent him a DM, and really the message was really funny, but the core of the message was put me in the game, coach, yeah. was basically what he said. <laughs> and, um, and then a few days later, we talked more on Instagram. He sent me a message, we kind of started talking, and he was, what, what really stood out to me was his boldness, which yeah. I would say my generation is very uh, rare yeah. for men to mm -hmm. move in such boldness. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so that stood out to me. Becca's loving the boldness over here. That's how my husband was. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was like, yes! It's necessary. You I know? love it too. No, it is. Yeah. yeah. And so, and, and I think especially coming out of my story, mm -hmm. um, in that right. relationship, in my history, it was really refreshing uh, to just experience such a strong, healthy man of God just pursuing a woman mm. in that way. Yes. And so it really marked me. And um, Was it like nine months later? That we were married? Yeah, y'all got married? <laughs> yeah. About nine months later. Hey, well, yeah. you know, you know. And yeah. then, uh. and then um, now they've been married about a year and a half, and we have some exciting news. Yes. Tell us. Tell everybody, Jasmine. We're pregnant. Yeah. 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 Having a baby boy. Yay. Having oh, a baby yeah. boy. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love God, it. Well, good. we are out of time. I want you to know that just like Jasmine, just like Lisa, the Lord had a plan and purpose yes. for their life. And he has uh, given us our, our identity. And so no matter what you're facing or what you've walked through in the past, you, know, you have to know that he loves you. And he has a hope and a future for you. I know for years I've done testimonies of people who have made the decision to follow the word of God and move beyond uh, same-sex attraction into what God's will was for their life. And so you say, well, Joni, you say that, you're going to get people mad at you. No, because, again, if you really love people, then you will speak the truth yeah, in a right, loving right. way. That's and right. I'm just telling you that no matter where you are or what you're involved in right now, that on the other side of this, God has such great purpose for you. And uh, we love you, and that's why we share the truth in all of this. And so if you're watching today, uh, and maybe you need someone to pray with you. Maybe you're confused. Um, that's why that prayer line number's on the screen. Maybe you need freedom in your life. And it may not be same-sex attraction. You may, you know, be a, a, an addict of some type. You have alcohol, drugs, uh, lust, uh, I don't know, maybe adultery. I don't know what you're involved in. Some type of sexual sin, and you want to be free today. I'm telling you that Jesus can and will set you free. So call that number on the screen. Um, you don't have to give your name or any information. Just say, hey, I want you to pray for me. And then I'm the good church. You really, it's really good and important to be connected to a Bible-believing church. Mm -hmm. Get a Bible. Start reading the Word of God. Listen to the right kind of music and allow God to enter your life in a way that you haven't before. And I'm telling you, you're going to come through this. Well, I want to thank Jasmine for sharing her story with us. For more, you can visit uh, her on, or check her out at mercyculture.com. And if today's Table Talk has touched your life, encouraged you, leave us a, a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. And if you don't know the Lord today, I'm just telling you, you can call out on his name, say, Jesus, I need you. And he'll meet you right where you are. So you be encouraged today. We love you. Thank you, Jasmine, Lisa, all the ladies. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today. Thank you.